This lesson covers how name resolution works from the client side. So for example, I'm going to flush out my local DNS cache on the client. I'm also going to fire up a trace on my DNS server. When I perform that lookup, it gets me the response. But notice I did not look up savdaldco1.sabletech.net. I just said savdaldco1. If I look at my DNS server and stop the capture and look at the records from that box, which is 137, there's that savdaldco1 record. And you'll notice it actually looked up what is savdaldco1.savletech.net directly. It did not ask for savdaldco1. It then also asks for the IPv6, the AAAA record. And in both cases, the response was sent with the IP address of the server. The way this works is the client has a set of default DNS suffixes. If I look at my IP config, I can see my primary DNS suffix. So when I perform an NS lookup, and notice I can have other ones. I only have one in my environment, but you can have multiple DNS suffixes. When my client performs a DNS lookup, by default they append this name to the record being looked up, which is what enables me to search by just using the host name. When you're troubleshooting DNS problems, the network monitor can be very, very useful to actually go and see what is going on. Also, don't forget about our monitoring capabilities. So in our properties, remember we can set things like the debug logging and the event logging. So these are very useful when name resolution is not working as you would expect. Also check Active Directory replication. If you're getting inconsistent results between different DNS servers, remember, if you have multiple DNS servers, clients may use different DNS servers at different times. If there's a problem with Active Directory replication, that will affect the replication of the DNS records. So you need to make sure a replication is functioning correctly to ensure your DNS records are replicating between the servers. Another great place to go for your DNS is actually Server Manager itself. If you go to the DNS, it will show you the various event logs related to DNS and the overall health, but also you have the Best Practice Analyzer. When you run the Best Practice Analyzer, it will actually perform a scan on the box and return any errors related to your configuration, which you can then go and resolve. While I'm focusing this on DNS, there's actually Best Practice Analyzer results for most of the components of Windows Server 2012. So I actually recommend you run this for all of your configurations to just look for any possible problems. If you find an issue, you should select it and it will actually show you a course of action to resolve that issue. Make sure if you are trying to troubleshoot name resolution, you think about all the caching that is happening. For example, on my client, I always want to make sure I flush out my local DNS cache first and then perform my lookups. Otherwise, I may be resolving against an out of date record in my cache. This concludes the lesson on how name resolution functions from a client perspective and some basic troubleshooting steps.